This video assumes you have seen the basic Exacto knife safety video tutorial. If not, return to the wiki to see it, then come on back to learn how to cut out a large scale physical print created from your variations file. In a live studio version of this course, you will create such a print. In an online version of the course this is not required, but you might be excited enough by your work that you may want to get a print like this made after the course is complete. Either way, if you have a print, you need to know how to trim it. If we have created prints in class, it is not a requirement that you mount the print, but many people like to do that, so this demo will also cover a mounting technique as well. To cut your print, you will need a print, of course, complete with crop marks. A sharp craft knife like this number 11 exacto blade and handle. Plenty of replacements to change out dull blades. A means to dispose of blades like this sharps container or some masking tape. A long metal straight edge like this T-square. A cutting mat like this one that can handle your longest cut. If you don't have these tools handy, we have them available for use in the campus maker space. If you wish to mount your work, you will need a mounting board. For example, you can use white or black foam core board that is 3 16 or 1 quarter inches thick. I don't recommend 1 8 inch board for mounting. Alternatively, you can use a museum mounting board. I recommend 4 ply board, and you can use a white, off white, gray, black, or natural color. A mounting adhesive. Adhesive transfer tape is the cleanest option, but is quite expensive. Spray adhesive works well but can be quite messy. I don't recommend foam adhesive strips, casein glues like Elmer's glue, super glues, or contact cement like rubber cement. And definitely stay away from the That's a lot of damage! How about a little more? <laughs> if using spray adhesive, you need an overspray material like newsprint or craft paper like the material I have here. We can offer access to craft paper and a room to work in at the campus maker space. Let's do a simple trim without mounting first. If your print format is not square, start with the longest cuts first. Make sure your cutting mat is on a table that is a convenient height. This is not something to do on a floor or sitting down. Place the print on the cutting mat, face up, so that you can make one long cut. Your crop marks should be evidently on the mat and not overlapping the edge. Take your metal straight edge and align it with the crop marks. This can be tricky. First, for safety, orient this long cut so that it's happening along a print edge that is not closest to your body. Second, cut with a straight edge laying over the print inside the crop marks, not on the waste material outside of the crop marks. If you happen to slip out and away from the edge, it will damage the waste material and not your print. If this is the first time you've worked with these tools, I strongly recommend rehearsing some practice cuts on some scrap material before trying it on the high stakes cuts. It helps to get a feel for the tools before you dive in. Bring the straight edge close to the crop marks. You should still see the crop marks. The straight edge should not be covering them. Follow best practice cutting techniques learned in the Exacto knife safety video. Do not cut your first edge cut all the way past your crop marks, such that it would completely release this waste material. Instead cut from mark to mark. Your waste material should still be attached to your work on both ends when you've completed this first cut. That way, you don't lose the crop marks to align for the perpendicular cuts to follow. Inspect this cut to make sure it's cut all the way through. If not, align your straight edge and finish any partial cut. Now move on to the second cut. If you have a non-square format, rotate your work around 180 degrees so you cut the second long edge. Repeat the process of the first cut. Then repeat for the remaining two edges. Always rotate the paper so that you are cutting in exactly the same manner and orientation as that first cut. In other words, move the paper, don't reorient your cutting process. You're done. If you are in the maker space, it's good etiquette to replace your tools, clean up your workspace, and replace a dull blade for the next user, capping the knife and placing it in the drawer. Now, 
A postscript for those who wish to mount prints. Here I will use spray adhesive and foam core to mount. I recommend a strong adhesive like this Super 77. First, make sure the mounting board is larger than your print. You will eventually trim them together for precision. Never pre-cut the mounting board to size and attempt to align. Align the print so that it will center with the larger mounting board, and slowly lower it into place with the center of the print touching the board first. This is a good thing to practice before you spray so you get a feel for where it needs to be positioned, so that you don't end up mounting a piece of your print outside of the mounting board edge. Next, set up an overspray station. For exceptionally large work, I recommend a large piece of craft paper that can extend way more than a foot around your work. I also recommend the use of a protective breathing mask for large spray jobs. We have all of this in the maker space where there is also an air purifier to take care of the overspray. This is not something to do in a closed room with no ventilation or air remediation solution. It's definitely not something to do in a dorm room or an apartment. Lay the print face down on the clean craft paper. If you are in the maker space, turn on the air purifier. When you spray, keep the spray in motion, and use a sweeping pattern from top to bottom of work, making sure your spray goes slightly past the edge of the work before turning back. Spray in one direction, then spray perpendicular to that. Don't use too much, a little will go a long way, but it needs to be uniform in application. When finished, clean the nozzle by turning the can upside down and spraying into a trash can until the nozzle clears. Otherwise this will clog. Now carefully lift your print by two opposing edges, and bring it to your mounting station. Align the print so that it will center with the mounting board, and slowly lower it into place with the center of the print, touching the board, as you practiced earlier. Once down, lightly press the print to adhere uniformly. Don't squeegee the print on. That is, don't rub the board from side to side. The ink is fragile on the kind of matte finish paper we supply, and rubbing will mar the ink, especially in dark areas where there is a thick ink deposit. I like to take a clean craft paper and protect the surface while I use my hand, or perhaps a piece of foam core, to apply uniform pressure across the print. Once mounted, cut this in the same manner described for the unmounted print. The difference will be that the thickness of your board will require many more passes of the knife. Where you might need two or three passes to cleanly cut the unmounted paper, you might need a half dozen passes to get through foam core, and a dozen to get through thick museum board. Take your time. Keep your pressure light but persistent on the blade, and let the blade do most of the work. I almost guarantee on a mounting job you'll replace your blade at least one time, and likely more. So after we've cut the four sides of the mounted print, you can see this does bring an extra level of finish to the work. Again, we don't require it, but it's not expensive to do and we have the tools on campus. I'll close by talking about framing. We certainly don't require framing for this job, but you might find you like your print so much that you want to frame it. If you plan on this, don't mount it beforehand, as the mounting is part of the framing process. The less expensive option is a prefabricated frame at a craft store like Michael's or a furniture store like Ikea. If you want to use a frame like that, research standard prefab sizes and formats online before you plan your print. You'll want to size your approximate 400 square inch work to fit a prefab frame you'd like. If you have an odd custom size, oh say 19 by 21 inches, you'll need a custom frame. Frame shops abound, and even craft stores like Michael's will do custom framing, although I like to support the smaller frame business, if I'm spending money.
But watch your wallet. Custom framing at the scale can set you back a hundred or more dollars. Artists will tell you it's often true that a custom frame job is more expensive than the materials that make the artwork itself. That said, a frame really brings a professional level of finish to your work, if that's what you wish. So, that's it. Enjoy bringing your large-scale digital image to life as a physical print.